What's up guys, Director Gold here. Today I'm gonna be doing a quick video breakdown for a nice project that recently wrapped up featuring my good friend Maverick and Marley Waters. The video, Flexin. Flexin, have you seen Flexin? You should go watch Flexin, it's on YouTube. But until then, let's do a quick video breakdown and uh, tell you a little bit about what went into the video, what we shot on, the gear we used, and some of what went into the planning for this fantastic video. So let's get to it. One of the most common questions I get is when you're doing a music video, where you start? When you're planning a visual or planning a video, the first thing you really wanna do is listen to the track. Listen to it over and over. What are the sounds? What are the lyrics? What kind of vibe? What kind of, you know, what kind of speed does the song have? You know, is it hyped up? Is it nice and mellow? You want your visuals to sort of accent the, the, the movement and the vibe of the song. You want the video is supposed to be a visual translation of that song. So we played Flexin, it was unanimous right off the bat. This is the video we wanna shoot for. I said, what if we do a video where people are literally flexing a workout video? Mav calls me up, says, I got a great gym down in Boston, one more rep athletics. Let's go check it out, see if this would be a good fit. No brainer, this place is incredible. It's not even just a gym, it really is like a club slash gym. The people working there were super cool. They already had like lights built into the, the facility. Like they had this octagon thing of LED lights hooked up to the ceiling. I was like, we're using that in the video. We're using all the lights that they have. They have, a, they already have a fog machine. So it's like, yeah, this is it. This is great. So real quick, the gear that we used on this video, the camera was a 6K Red Epic Dragon. The lenses was an 18 to 35 Sigma stills lens and a 50 to 100 Sigma zoom lens, if you want to call that a zoom lens. Really no stabilizers. I like to keep my rig nice and heavy so I can go handheld. It just helps me connect more with the camera and the movements if I'm not throwing it on a Ronin or a glide cam, stuff like that. There's a time and place for all that. The heavy weight of the RED camera allows you to do handheld shots. It's pretty smooth movement. You're not gonna get that jittery handheld feel because you have so much weight on the camera. So now that we have the gear that we use, let's do a quick frame breakdown of a couple different scenes and talk about how we designed these the way that we did. So the first scene I'm gonna talk about was everyone's favorite scene for obvious reasons, the flamethrower scene. Now, I can't get into too specific about what sort of specific types of lights were used, but there were a few layers of background lights that we threw in just to give the environment a little more color and a little more depth. We had a bunch of what's called color blasts, RGB lights, um, that Jared provided from Surefire Studios, and they had those pretty much shooting at all the walls because I wanted all the brick walls to have some kind of light. I didn't want them to be totally blown out or overexposed, but I wanted to add some dynamic to show the space that we're in in general. So we threw all those colored lights on in the background, hitting the brick walls, and we had a spotlight down to the rear of the Corvette that Corey pulled in and turned around. Corvette is right there in the back with a spotlight shooting through the bottom of the car out toward us. And that creates this nice shadow and glow from below the car, which also gave Mav a nice backlight and a nice shadow. All those shadows pointing toward the camera created a real nice dynamic effect. And the last light that we used is actually a practical, and that was the flamethrower itself. Now, we didn't actually light Matt. We didn't throw a key light on him because the flamethrower gives off such a crazy exposure and bright light source that we didn't need to throw a light on him. The flame was his light. So when it starts off and there's no flame, you can't see him at all. But once he turns that flamethrower on and starts waving it around, that's his key light. That's also a practical. As long as you're safe, and as long as you check the exposure level that you're going to get beforehand so that you can account for once the flame is up, maybe it's too bright, maybe it's not bright enough, is it too close to the subject? So just vary how the flame is gonna play into the overall look of your lighting setup. There's about one, two, three, even four levels 
of uh, lighting effects in this shot as well as a fog machine. And fog machines or mist machines are super useful because they help disperse the light. They give the light sort of a physical atmosphere to reflect off of. And you might see the color of the lights in your shot, but if you throw fog or mist, it actually gives a physical surface for that light to hit and, it'll, and it creates those, those light beams become visible. Because other than that, there's nothing for that light to hit. So you don't see the shape of the light. So fog is not just a really cool effect, but it exposes the shape of the light as well. So the second scene I wanna talk about is still relevant to the car, our whole intro scene. And this was very specific the way I wanted this to look and I hope the effect came off on camera, but I wanted the car to come through this sort of ominous background. So the way to do that is I had two spotlights, two source fours set up on the ground at different light temperatures in the thick wall of fog right at the uh, right at the entrance where the gate is. I had the car tucked behind that so when the car pulled through in between those lights it's also coming through that thick wall of fog toward the camera into the room so I wanted it to look nice and dramatic with the lighting in the fog but I also didn't want to see the space that the car was emerging from. So two big lights shooting at the camera which already kind of creates this big washed out look for the lights thick layer of fog that way we're not going to see anything behind where the car is coming from and there you go you have your nice dynamic shot with a car pulling in and it creates a really cool intro so our, although there are a few different other looks and uh, scenes in this video the main one really is our big performance scene and this was our really big setup there's about five or six layers of effects and lighting going on in this shot and i'll talk about them really quick so again way way in the background we have our color blasts our rgb lights the same ones that were lighting the brick wall in the alleyway to get our exteriors lit up, those same lights are now in the gym, shooting against all the equipment, shooting against the walls. Um, it's not super helpful to shoot these lights against a black wall or a black backdrop because those lights don't really show up. You have to white, you have to light a white or brighter background to get the color of those lights to become visible on camera. So it was a little tricky that the background was just totally blacked out. So they weren't quite as effective as I want. But again, throw some fog up there and that color will come to the forefront a little bit. So that's layer one, was our red RGB lights in the background. So our second layer of lighting was two source fours. I think the same ones that were shooting below the car in the alley shot. Two source fours, one directly in front of the camera, way, way in the back, but shooting at us, and one way off to the left, shooting toward the subject's right shoulder. But these spotlights were also being used as a rim light or a backlight on the subject. So they were not just really cool practicals that added a nice color effect to the shot, but they also acted to uh, accent the back of our subject as a nice backlight. So the third layer of lighting were four Nanlite quasar lights posted on the edges of like the octagon hardware itself. We had two in the back, which you can clearly see in the shot. Those are acted as acting as practicals, but also more backlights. And they just add this cool little tube glare in the back to add some accent to the foreground. And then we had two quasar lights in the front, which you can't see, which are also pointing at the subject from the front acting as key lights. We also had a 55 watt Cam TV bolts and spotlight in the front off to my right that I had an assistant holding and moving around with me anytime I needed to move with the talent as they were moving around. But that was our main key light. So anytime you see someone in the performance scene in any of the shots where they have that nice Rembrandt light coming from the right side, that's a 55 watt right next to me off camera. It's not a practical, it's off camera shooting at our subject to give them their main front light. But at least four different layers of light, okay? Actually a fifth if you count overhead um, the built-in LEDs that the gym already had installed. You know, I think there were four of them up in the roof shooting down which acted as an additional hair light and that was basically it those were our main three scenes at least our more heaviest built out in terms of lighting and production that's what i learned in this video especially that i haven't done so much in others is less camera movement you can rotate it a little bit but encourage and direct what's in front of the camera to do more give more action in front of the camera so that the audience or the viewer when they're watching it back they're not even aware that the camera's barely moving because they're so, they're so distracted, they're so pulled into what is in front of the camera that it feels like there's a lot of action or a lot of movement because the movement's happening 
in front of the camera instead of the camera itself. So yeah, that's my quick breakdown of the Mav video. I hope that was helpful. Let me know that you watched it. Let me know that you liked this. If you learned anything, please, that's the really reason I want you to comment. Give me some feedback. And uh, if you do, maybe I'll make a bunch more because I got plenty more I could talk about. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later. Lock it up. <laughs>